Oh yeah. Alrighty. How's everyone doing? Let's see. We got popping in here real quick. Y'all say hey in the chat. Let me know where you're from. Ben, how are you doing? Let me see. I'll answer your questions really quick, Ben. Uh, give me a second. Say hello, Rocky. Hello, Keely. What's up? Let's see. Yemen. Kim, how are you doing? Were you from Arizona? Cool. Pat, what's up? Amazing. Let me see. Before everybody else pops in here, Ben's got a couple of questions. Um, if you kind of hold your questions too, I'll answer these really quick. I want to let you know about the new boxes. And then we'll do a little Q&A after that. But uh, let's see. How often does water need to be changed? Usually in the crack keys stuff. If you're growing fast growing greens, I don't really change it out. I always keep it between half and three quarters full at all times. And how hot is too hot? The temperature of your aquaponics was 100. Yeah, that's uh, way, way too hot. It needs to stay uh, around 80, you know, maybe 85. And uh, uh, 100 is like way too hot. So towards the end of the stream, I'll talk about I'm, I'm working on another container that's not, you know, this one, but it's insulated. And it might help a little bit, but right now, here in Florida, our uh, heat index is 105. It's just uh, brutal out there. Let's see. Earl Rowe, how are you doing? Jim, what's up? Joanne, welcome, Arizona. Ruth, first time, Vermont, welcome. Glad you're here. Welcome. Pat, Quebec. And who else we got here? Shane, Australia. Facebook so if you all see uh, comments in that popping up I'm streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time so if I'm answering a question or something and you don't see it it's probably coming from one the other platform morning from Australia how are you doing Fort Lauderdale I'm in uh, Florida too Janice how are you doing but um, let me get started real quick like I say y'all keep coming in here saying hi let me know where you're from say hello to each other uh, just want to pop on for a little bit and let you know that I had a lot of people asking for food grade containers. It took me a while to find one that works. Um, who's that? Nella, how are you doing? Scotland, awesome, Susan. And Ruth said it's 105 outside. Whoa, that is, that's way too warm for me. Nevada, you're hot out in Nevada too, aren't you? What a good idea to bear. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all got questions, my wife does a lot of this with me and she'll answer you in the chat and that too. But uh, that's one way to kind of keep stuff kind of cool is to bury it, especially if you use the big totes, like the 16 gallon totes, dig a hole down in the ground, set it down inside, uh, make sure people know that, you know, not to step on it, you know, fall in and break an ankle or anything. But if you can bury it, it uh, helps out. It's hot. My spinach is bolting and getting a chance to harvest barely a leaf. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's warm all over. I mean, even up north, I couldn't believe it's like uh, 100 degrees. Now growing ginger, peppers, onions, potatoes, garlic in my house. Awesome, Jim. That's cool. Yeah, one thing grows outside because it's tropical is ginger, ginger and turmeric. We've got that growing in the garden. And you are known worldwide. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's all of us. We all know each other, right? 97. Yeah, y'all let me know, too. It's, like, really hot in here. I'm in a garage. I've got an air conditioner running, like, right over there. Let me know if y'all can hear it or if it's bothering you any. I can turn it off for a little while. Nomad. Maybe do a kilo. Okay, so y'all talking to each other. Cool. Yeah, you know, we've been using this. I've been selling these for a while, and y'all been building these. A lot, of, a lot of you have took pictures. It's pretty cool. We have a Facebook group. I don't have the list below. I'll do that later. But if you just look up Keep On Growing, on Facebook, we got a group, and everybody gets in there, post pictures about you know what they're doing, and uh, all of you guys who have gone on Etsy, my Etsy shop, and bought these, they they bought these, they planted them out, and then they sent me pictures back, and that's been pretty cool. So I've been looking through all those pictures. That's pretty awesome. Um, what do you call it? The only thing with this is I had a lot of people over the years have asked me, you know, if it's food grade, and you know, it's just a downspout you know, from Home Depot. So 
you know, it's not food grade. That's not meant, you know, for that. And some people are, you know, worried about that. Um, you know, some people aren't, you know, PVC, all our water and everything comes into the house through PVC. Let me get this banner off at the bottom here. And let me get my name off. That's my other channel. Yeah, give us a little more room here. There we go. All righty. Now you can see the bottom here. Then I don't have to lift this up too high. But yeah, it's not food grade. So I was looking for something that's food grade because a lot of people ask for it. And when I tell them no, you know, then they're, they're you know, like I said, that makes me sad because I want everybody to give this a try. You know, this is our baby step, our beginning step in hydroponics. And if you can learn this, you know, maybe you get in the hydroponics and, and that, you know, that's a cool way to grow. It uses a lot less resources, only about 10 percent of the water that a traditional farm does. There's no weeding or anything. You know, some people don't have room for a garden. Some people live in an apartment. So there's all kind of reasons why you could grow like that. And but but people, you know, because of, you know, BPA and all of that, there, you know, some people did ask, you know, is it food grade? And, and like I said, and I, I never had a solution for them, you know, except, you know, to go use a milk carton or, you know, check out my channel and try to make something else. But I didn't have anything to offer them. So I've been looking into it. The only problem is that I'd have to get a company that makes food grade plastic to make me a container. And that would cost, you know, they'd have to set up a jig and everything and, and send me a, I'd have to pay for a sample, okay it, and then and, and get a run. And I'd have to order like a minimal order. And we're talking about like tens of thousands of dollars. And then I try to sell these as cheap as possible because, you know, I don't want to like charge a real high price in that, you know, trying to make my money back and then people not be interested in it you know so like i said i want everybody to give it a try so i'm trying to find some way to get it where you know i can i can get it at cheap price to y'all uh shipping was a big concern too because we had a lot of people order these already believe it or not i made about 1500 of these uh so a lot of these went out and some people are going to want you know the newer containers but uh, when I punched in, you know, I tried to find different sizes that would fit. And when I got the box and punched the dimensions into my Etsy shop, the shipping was like out of the roof. You know, I was like, whoa, you know, it's like twice as much as what, you know, the this would cost. So you'd pay more in shipping than you would for the container. And I didn't want that. So I had to try and find something that would fit. And believe it or not, um, the Etsy price, when uh, we put in the estimate, all we do is we put in the dimensions of a package, the length, the width, the height, and the weight, and it spits out a, a, an approximate price. And when you add those together, your dimensions like 13 inches by 15 inches by 6 or 7 or whatever, if those came up to 37, it was like one price. And if it went over to 38, the price like doubled. Like if it was $10, it'd, it'd jump up to $22. Now it's like, well, you know, that, that's that's insane. And I wanted to make it where we could still run our special, buy one, get one free. So I could shove two containers in one and the weight goes up a little. And and I didn't want the box to get any bigger because then then the uh, shipping would double too. And I, and I couldn't have that. So, so I've been working on that. That's where I've been. I've been trying to find containers that would work, that, that were readily available where I could find it. And uh, these are getting harder and harder to find. Uh, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's only carry so many of these. You know, I could order them if I knew how many, you know, I needed. But it takes like two to three weeks for them to get in. So I ended up having to run to every Home Depot and Lowe's around me, you know, all, all the way south and east and across the bridge. And, and I was running like a madman trying to keep up with all the orders. So I'm trying to find something where I can just order it and it just gets shipped to my house. Makes it a little bit easier. Anywho... Uh, one other thing with this was it was a little tough to clean out, you know, it, it's doable. You can do it. But all I did was fill it up with water, put a little bit of uh, bleach. And if there's some buildup, put a little vinegar, let it sit overnight. Next morning, rinse it out, you know, maybe get a bottle brush and try to get around in there. But, you know, the top doesn't come off. So cleaning was a little bit of a problem. So I got this other container. And uh, if I'm missing some of your comments, um, I'll try to get back through them. You know, just saying hey to each other and all of that. 
Um, I'll get back to your comments in just a minute, but if I don't get through all of this, I like to forget it. So let me kind of just run through this real quick and now we'll jump back in the comments. All right. Anywho, so I found this. And it's food grade and it's about the right size, about 13. I think it's 20, uh, 12 and a half by about 14. And it fits in a box where I can ship it for about the same price as the downspout. So if you guys have bought the downspouts before and you, you know about what shipping is to your place, I'm in Florida, so if we ship somewhere on the United States on the east side, you're talking anywhere from close to me, like eight something, to ten bucks, and all the way out to California would be about fifteen. Um, so doing it this way with this size, I can still get away with those prices. If I went a little bit bigger, like an inch bigger, uh, in either direction, length, width, height, then the the shipping prices doubled. So that that's what I was doing was trying to find something that fit perfect so that we wouldn't get that extra shipping on it because like I said I don't want to you know I don't want the shipping to be more than the product itself um, but this is cool because when you go to clean it the top comes off so cleaning is no problem anymore um, you know like the the downspout so that's pretty cool so you got a removable lid but I'm going to do just like we did. You all won't be able to see this because the pool noodles are green. And I got a green screen, so they're invisible. But you'll get all, you know, all the pool noodles will be in here. And we'll get our sample nutrients. Now, this is enough to make five gallons. If uh, any of you haven't done this before or haven't gotten this, um, this one's uh, all you have to do is mix that with five gallons of water and this container right here holds two gallons so it'll get you through the grow and um, uh, somebody asked right in the beginning who was that Ben was asking in the beginning when to change it out and I don't change these out what you want to do is uh, start off you know you don't want it slammed to the uh, top just to touch the bottom of the roots you know of your plants and remember to keep it always between half and three quarters. If you let it get down below half, then it's going to warm up really quick. And then once you refill it, it might drown some of the roots. And then if you keep it above three quarters, you're going to drown the air roots. So, uh, you know, if you guys are new, you know, check out some of the videos on cracking and that. And you'll know that, you know, you need some room at the top for air and you don't want it to get too low. So I keep it between half and three quarters all the time. So if you fill this up the first time, about two gallons, you don't ever want to let it go down below. So you're never going to put more than one gallon in. So with the five gallons you have, you'll be able to fill it back up three times. So that's more than enough to uh, get you through a harvest. Hey, Gina Bina, how are you doing? And Frank, hello. And uh, everybody else is just like just sliding in here. Jeannie, how are you doing? Jeannie's one uh, who's got some of the downspouts. Um, but... Uh, you're going to get the pool noodles. You're going to get, you know, sample of the nutrients to get started off. That'll hold you over until you can um, go ahead and uh, order some from uh, Amazon uh, or Morgan County Seeds is where I get mine. But, I, you know, I buy it in bulk. I get like 25 pounds uh, at a time. 69.50 here. Whoa. Let's see. It rained a bit. So y'all talking to each other. Cool. I'm looking into the tower today. Awesome. Um, and what I'm going to do too is send uh, these are for meal prep, and they're kind of like the takeout containers. Uh, I'll go get a whole case of the takeout containers and toss them into these so that you guys can start some microgreens. These are food grade too, so you don't have to worry about going out. Everybody wants like the green container like I have, and those weren't food grade, and. Uh, the Dollar Tree doesn't have the green ones, and sometimes they don't even have that. But I'm doing a video where I'm showing how to use a lot of these, and I'll toss these in. Uh, if you order these right now, I'll toss one of these. This one's actually a little more durable. It's thicker. It's for the meal prep. It's not like the takeout containers. So I'll go ahead and uh, cut some slots in here, and all you have to do is put some paper towel on it, flip the lid, you know, flip the lid over, put some paper towel on it, and it sits just down in there just right. And then you can get your microgreens started. Let those go for a little while. 
and then take them out then you have your pool noodles and then you have the top and then you transfer them into there and it's all all said and done so that way you've got everything you need to get started except for um, a couple of paper towels and your seeds I'm looking into getting seeds uh, I'm not real sure about that yet but I'll let you all know uh, what I was thinking was that if I buy seeds in bulk like different ones you know uh, broccoli lettuce radish you know what what have you and then maybe put a sample or you guys can order samples where you have just small batches instead of having to order a pound of broccoli and a pound of this because sometimes the seeds I think broccoli can get up to like 25 30 35 dollars for like a pound of uh, uh, microgreen seeds so I'm looking into that I don't know if I'm allowed to sell seeds uh, or if I'm like a, a nursery or um, what have you share an order now awesome cool appreciate that and uh, let's see I'm gonna look back at through the chat just a hair can't go through the whole thing but uh if I if you got a question go ahead and pop it in the chat again now that I'm over here looking looking at Canada, my friend sells them and she swears by them yeah is that the tower garden from uh what is that place juice plus I think Jeannie doing great awesome and Gina Bean, how are you? How are you? Welcome to the hydroponic show. You're lucky, I believe. Let's see, you're very careful. Major water shortage. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. Let's answer some of your questions. All right, let's see. Love your wicking system for the microgreens. Cool, cool. Yeah, that works. That works perfect. I love that. Let's see. I have a ton of those food containers. Awesome. I started my seeds in plastic containers that had cookies in them from the grocery store. They make good uh, green. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. If you use a little lid, it's like a little greenhouse cover. Let me see. Let me pop a picture up here, too. We're going through this. You know, can see what it looks like. Let's see, Mr. Van Doozy has taught me so much. Oh, thank you. I'm on fixed income and buying fresh veggies lately. It's out of my price range. It's so nice to have it. It's organic and fresh. That's cool, Joanne. I really appreciate that. And uh, that's what, um, you know, like I said, you know, I have these on sale. You know, some people can't afford to buy them, uh, can't afford to make it, or they're not handy. I, you know, I have tools around, and I didn't think about it because I was I was just making them. You know, when I need them, before I even thought about starting a YouTube channel, I was like, you know, well, I need to, you know, uh, drill the holes, and I had a hole saw, and I was like, oh, I got to bend in, and I tried it with a torch at first, and that works good, but it kind of burns it if you don't move it fast enough. <laughs> Then I went on over and tried it with uh, a heat gun, and that worked. So that, you know, I had those tools, and then I started the YouTube channel. I didn't even think about it. You know, some people um, uh, don't have those tools, and a hole saw is uh, not that cheap. You know, it's not, not horribly expensive, but if you're not going to use it for something else, it's a little bit expensive to get that. Hey, Brad, how are you doing? Um, this is Brad Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. Y'all check him out. 95 degrees. Wow. Uh, I have some microgreens growing in the house and I'll use his uh, full spectrum lights. Uh, I know you can't click off of here from uh, YouTube. Brad, are you a mod on here? I can't see I'm on like StreamYard, but if you are, drop your link in the channel for people. What about algae growth in these? Yeah, if it's going to sit out in the sunlight, it's white like mine's out there right now, and I'm not getting too much algae in it. What you might want to do is, what, what I can do is, you know what that reflective um, insulation is? It looks like bubble wrap, except it looks like it's got foil on it. Cut that and wrap it around the bottom. It'll help uh, reflect the heat, and it'll cut down on the light coming into it. Another thing I'm going to do in the future, if I can get Miss Keeley 
work on on it. I'm cutting a little box to go around here, and I'll have little directions on how y'all can do that. Uh, but it's basically a five and a half inches, which is a one by six. So you can get a one by six and just cut a couple of pieces and just butt joint together. You don't have to do anything fancy with miter joints or anything and make a little box and set it in there. Here, I, I've got something to show y'all. Let me get this picture off of here. Hold on one second. I got it sitting right up here. Here we go. Well, my wife painted that. She painted a little butterfly. You can say what it is. A little dragonfly on there. But you can just get one by sixes. Or if you want to, I mean, you could probably get the quarter inch board or half inch too. You know, it doesn't have to be the stick, but this is this sturdy. And it's not going to take very much. This one's smaller. This was for the shoe boxes. You remember, that's what I started with. Um, but you can just go get one by sixes. And you don't need a miter joint, just put a box joint. You can always make something like that and then set the box down inside of it and it'll look really pretty. You have a bunch of these, you can paint them up or just stain them or you can leave them like natural wood. You can use a uh, cedar or something that you can just oil up and that'll look really nice too. And that'll cut down on the light and then this will also help keep it cool when it gets a little warm. So that's another idea. And let me see, I probably fell way behind on the. Get some sponges, got slits in them. Yep, set your seeds in it. Yep, that's a, that's very good. And that's one thing I worked uh, worked with like in the very beginning too, was I used a uh, craft sponge. I guess um, uh, they sell it in big sheets. And I would, you know, we'll cut those up and that before we started using the pool noodles. The pool noodles just got like, uh, uh, just got easy because it was round already and I can go through and just cut them really fast and, and uh, you know, I've got 50 of them in like no time. Frank, nice. I'm gonna try that today. Cool, thanks for so much for the share. Yeah, and if y'all have the takeout containers like that, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss these in. You know, if anybody orders them, I'm gonna toss it in with that just so, you know, you have an extra one, but but most of us go and eat takeout. And I've got a video coming where I'm showing a whole bunch of different containers. It doesn't have to be like this either. This was just, you know, one that was readily available to me. And, you know, like I said, it's a little sturdier. But you can use round ones. You, you know, the shape doesn't really matter. People were really getting hung up on that green one. And I did that because it looked nice. You know, my wife, we had it all sitting on our porch. And we had the same green ones all stacked together. And it looked nice. And when we made videos, it looked cool instead of having a bunch of hodgepodge. But uh, you didn't need to get that exact green container. And people were getting hung up on it and kept, you know, saying my Dollar Tree doesn't have it. And, you know, and, and it, uh, they were wanting me to buy some and send it to them. And, and then all of a sudden, then my Dollar Trees ran out of them, too. So, but you can use just about any container. So most of us have these sitting around. That's why I want to use this because I'm, I'm going to do a video and show people, you know, how to use these because then maybe we don't go buy containers, you know, that we'll just, you know, reuse the ones that we have and um, save a little bit of uh, waste. But uh, like I said, I'm going to toss these in that way. If anybody like orders and you didn't save any of these or, you, get, you know, some of us don't eat out, right. Then you'll be ready to go. You won't have to think like, Oh, I got to go grow some microgreens or something. You know, I, I just want, I want to put as much in there as I could to get you guys started. And that's why I said um, uh, I'm thinking of uh, trying to see if I can sell seeds to you all. And I think that would be cool if you got that and you had a little mixture of seeds that you could start with, like, you know, your different like broccoli and, and pak choy and everything. And, and then that way I could order in bulk and kind of uh, give it out to everyone. Pool noodles are expensive. Oh, wow, are they? Unbelievable. They're like magic. Yeah, that was the, the thing. And Keeley's the one that gave me the idea. And let me see. Let 
that didn't kill the box per hour. Nice. Mosquito control. It's just try to keep up, uh, try to keep all the holes covered as much as possible. And even the holes, if you harvest, you know, make sure you keep that covered. Sometimes some people will pull out the plant too or pull the roots out and leave the hole. You know, there, any little tiny crack, a mosquito will get in. Um, the downspouts, you know, I don't seal up the ends, but you can always get silicon and seal around the inside. I usually leave those open so that you know i don't forget or if it rains you know it doesn't fill all the way back up uh it'll start dripping out the side a little bit or when i go to fill it i know when it gets about to the top if i fill too far you know it starts dripping out um but you if you got a mosquito problem where you live uh go ahead and seal it up keep everything sealed up as, as tight as possible a van Doozy mix yeah i'm looking into that have you ever grown okra? No, I haven't. Uh, I just saw somebody have some okra in my, my Facebook group, but I don't know if they grew it in a traditional garden. My Facebook group, there's it's not just hydroponics that people have. If you guys have like a traditional garden, you can go post pictures over there. We just love you know seeing things grow. You know what we do here is is to make it easy so that you know like anybody can garden. You know uh, whether you have a traditional garden or hydroponics, you know we still love it all. So I got a little Facebook group and people go over and they, they post things and somebody just had their first okra uh, harvest. But I think an okra plant grows pretty big. You'd have to get like a five gallon bucket if you're going to do it in it. Um, our pool, yeah, yeah, that's where I get it. I cleaned out. Uh, I look funny. I've got some pictures of me, but I'm, I go into uh, the Dollar Tree. And I grab because I'm making all of these and, and uh, sending them all out. And I'll grab 40 or 50 of them at a time. And everybody likes the green ones. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know, if I run out when we get towards the winter time, you know, I might have to have some of the other colors. But I'm, I'm going around trying to collect all the green ones. So everybody within 20 miles of me, they don't get green pool noodles. They, they go in and they're always gone because I'm loading up the car with it. So I, I get weird looks. When people see me uh, walking out in the parking lot. Pool noodles come in different sizes. Yeah, we have two inch neck cups. So we took the cup that fit the same at the dollar store. Three different sizes. Yeah, yeah, they do. So the the bigger pool noodle fits into the, the three inch size. The three inch cup pretty good. And that's, a, that's another good point is the net cups you know i don't sell like i said i'm trying to do things as cheap and as easy as possible for people so if you have this and you have the pool noodle and you put the insert in just like my videos and we don't use the net cup that's the easiest way to do it stuff like pak choy is okay it grows kind of low if you're trying to grow something that's bigger you might want a little more um uh for it to hold on to you can always put a net cup in there you can get your pool noodle and cut it a little bit smaller and it fits right inside the net cup. So sometimes I still do use the net cup, and some people have asked for it. You know, they, um, uh, what do you call it, ask me if I can, like, add on a little bit to their order and then if I can throw some net cups in. So um, we, still, we still use those. It, it still works out. Yep, yep, the dollar store. That's where we get it. I want to grow okra. See, y'all got my wife going now. She's going to be trying to get me to grow it and uh, grow okra. How are you doing, Leandro? And there's the Facebook group. Y'all go ahead and join that. We'd, we'd love to see if we get, I think there's there's over 1,500 members over there right now. But everybody's growing. If you've got questions, like here, I'm sure I missed some questions. I'm sorry. You know, I'm uh, just one person doing this. Um, and uh, if you've got questions, you can always hop in that Facebook group. And there's a lot of people in there, like um, oh, Brand hops over there, but there's CB and uh, David Charest and uh, Matt Garver and a bunch of guys that are in there that grow hydroponics like this and they, they have answers. Um, and they pop in there all the time. And whenever they put videos up on their channels, they, they drop a little link to their, their channel. And um, what do you call it? They, they're always glad to help people. So if you've got questions, you can hop in there. I try to get in there now and then. Um, where it's just kind of tough running this channel. I've got another channel and then, you know, business and then building 1,500 
uh, downspouts kind of put me a little bit behind on you. You guys can tell I haven't had a video out in, in over a month, but it's, uh, I mean, I told my wife, I'm like in a little, it's like a little factory out here. I turn, she hasn't been able to make a video for her arts and crafts channel because I turned our studio into, you know, it's like an assembly line where every day I'm running out getting like 10 downspouts and cutting them up and drilling holes and bending them and, and then shipping, you know, you really wouldn't think about all the stuff. I was like, oh, I'll sell a couple of these. It'll be all right. I didn't think, you know, I need boxes to put them in. I need, you know, just an extra printer ink. I need paper. I need stuff to print. I need address labels. Um, I need the little baggies to put the nutrients in. So sometimes I'm sitting in here till the wee hours in the morning with the little scale, measuring out the little baggies to put into each one of these and tape and you know there's a whole bunch of stuff that you really don't think about and, and once i start started you know selling them on a a little bigger scale here i was like you know what this is going to take up a little space <laughs> so i've got it like all over the place i didn't really plan for it and it's creep crept into my wife's studio that you see over here this is a green screen but it's not an actual picture of her studio that's right to the left of me and uh uh uh, I'm trying to get a handle on that. So uh, that's one thing that this will help too is that I won't have to go shopping around for those containers. I can get them shipped to the house and they come stacked together so I can get more of them in here. You know what a, a 10 foot downspout is like and, and getting 10 of those at one time and bringing them in. There was one time I had so many orders one week. I think I had 35 to 40 of them and I had to cut them and, and that's what I had a picture. It looked like Jenga. You know, it was like an eight foot tall stack of uh, um, downspouts. So these other ones, I can order them and they can come stacked inside of each other. And, and I can fit a whole lot more in here. So it's going to work a little bit better. I'm an avid juicer. Awesome. Yeah, we're juicing juicers too. Uh, yeah, we, we get some funny looks. But we used to say, yeah, I'm juicing. And, and they thought it was like uh, uh, steroids. And I was like, no, it's like a green juice, a smoothie. Kale, celery, and cucumbers are what I like. Continuous basis. I use lots of apples, ginger, lemon. Yeah, that sounds just like what we do too, Kim. That sounds delicious. That's actually got me kind of uh, um, hungry. My stomach growled when I heard that. Oh, Ruth, $10 super chat. Thank you. Super sticker. Really do appreciate that, Ruth. That's awesome. I had a uh, um, one, two... pop it back up there I'm on a stream yard I'm like on another software so sorry if it took me a little while to answer that um, when it pops up on YouTube it takes you know about 30 seconds or a minute before it pops up over here but I really do appreciate that thank you and all of this you know uh, uh, if anybody when y'all buy these things you know it's it's it helps you out you learn how to grow things but it, it does help me out because it supports this channel um, you know, I would like to do this full time, you know, me and my wife, because of the shutdown, we've been home and that's why I've been able to make so many of these and, and uh, get them to so many people. But, you know, after everything opens back up and we're able to get back out, I'd, I'd like to still do it and then help people out. And so when you all order things like this, too, or my ebook or, or whatever you do, um, or like this uh, Ruth, you know, being so nice, you know, super sticker, you know, those kind of things just help me with the channel where. You know, I can spend more time at home doing more things like this and experimenting and sharing things with y'all. Oh, that's one more thing I was going to talk about experimenting. And we we're talking about the heat and everything, right? Another container I'm working on uh, is a bucket and it's going to be insulated. And I've got it sitting outside in the heat. I've got a thermometer in and it's looking really promising. Let it sit out there all, all during the heat. And uh, I'm going to film that and I'm going to show you guys how to make it. So there'll be a video on, on this channel, um, you know, like I have how to make the downspouts. Uh, I'll have a little playlist or something, or, or I might stick it in with the downspout. But when I go ahead and figure it out and test it, uh, I'll make a little video and I'll pop it up for you. I'll show you how to make an insulated one so it can sit out there because I figure it's like really hot right now. It's hard to like grow anything, right? So I was like, you know, instead of getting a little depressed about it, I said, well, you know, now's a good time to... Uh, experiment with things when I'm busy, you know, building these downspouts. Let me try to make another container, make something that, that's insulated. And uh, I really like the way it's turning out. 
So uh, let me test it a little more. And if it seems like it's staying cool, uh, I'll go ahead and put up a video and show you guys how to build it. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, I'll still, I'll, I'll put it in my shop. You know, like I said, not everybody has the capability, you know, like drilling holes. You know, nobody, there's some people don't want to go buy a hole saw like, for like 20 or 30 bucks. They don't want to do that if they're just going to build one or two containers. If you're going to build out like 10 or 12 of them, you know, you might want to buy that. But some people don't want to. They just want to get one and test it or put you some herbs or, you know, grow a little bit of basil. Um, uh, just just a couple of herbs, you know, for around the house. So I'll still I'll put that on the channel. But I want to show everyone it, to make it because uh, I only sell in the United States. And that's because of shipping, you know, how the shipping cost has gone up. So you can imagine us like shipping out out of the country too. And I'm really sorry because I know we got people here from all over the world. I want to help everyone, but I mean like shipping overseas and that we're talking like 20, 30, 40, you know, and up for a twenty dollar, twenty four dollar, you know, uh, uh, grow box. So uh, I can't really afford to do that. And some people are willing to pay for it, but I get into some problems with you know if I do ship it, there's a problem that doesn't get there. You know, then I'm out, you know, that shipping and I end up like losing a lot of money trying to ship another one because I'm not going to let leave you guys, you know, high and dry. So if there's problems with things, you know, then then I always get, you know, stuck. And so with the shipping costs getting that high and me cutting the profit margins down really low on everything else so that I can give everyone a good price. Um, I really can't afford to like have a bunch of mistakes like that. So I just do the United States right now. And even then I still get mistakes. Uh, I. I prepay uh, by the prepay labels with the United States Post Office and my boxes are three to four pounds I've sent like over 500 of them through uh, this one post office and they sent me an adjustment saying that my my weight was wrong and I've sent all of these through instead of three pounds it said it was 46 pounds and they charged me an extra 80 something dollars so I lost eighty dollars. I filed a complaint with them like three times. Haven't heard for, back from them. You know, it's all automated stuff, and then they keep saying, "We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you." But you only have thirty days, so they're like, "Get back to me. Get back to me." And, and I still haven't heard from them. So I'm like eighty out eighty bucks because of a discrepancy on on a label. And I even told them I sent and I sent two packages to that one address. One one said three pounds, and the other one said forty six pounds, and they were both exactly the same. And I've sent hundreds of them through here. So uh, you can imagine if this goes through and happens with something going to Canada or to the UK and that. So I, I just really can't afford I want to help everyone. But it's um, uh, if I win the lottery, I'd just be making boxes and send them to everybody. So but until then, I kind of, you know, I'm just stuck with doing the United States. And let's see. Talking to Keeley. Thanks so much. Does bok choy grow in the full sun uh, for you or does it grow in partial shade? Hey, appreciate your videos. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, my bok choy during the summer like this, I've got it in partial shade or it'll bolt and it'll bolt really quick. When it starts to bolt, I go through and just pick off the heads. Um, but sometimes you can't help it. It just, you know, so hot, it just bolts really fast. Uh, during the fall, now, if you guys get these containers, you know, you might not be able to grow right away or like right now but in a few months you know you start you can start growing microgreens getting ready prepping you know eating your microgreens uh but then uh fall is coming up pak choy the one that i use the shiro um variety it grows really well through the fall and then if it you even get like a frost if you get down to just like 30 or 32 you know not like you know minus 10 or anything but if you just get around there I've had the pak choy actually like freeze up, have a little frost overnight, and then the sun comes up and it thaws out and, it, and it's done just fine. So fall, I really like to. I've already started tossing some little pak choy seeds into that um, hydrogen, that grow bed that I've got set up. You all saw that video on that. I think one of my last ones that I just did, I just sprinkled some new seeds in there. And so I'm going to grow these in a partial shade. And when those start to grow, about halfway or maybe you know it depends on you know how long you know we we get this really warm weather we didn't even get winter here in florida last last year at all you know a couple of cold days and that was it i go ahead and plant some more out get ready for fall and as we get to the 
kind of chillier days. Um, I'll put those in full sun. Let's see. I'm going to hop to the bottom and try to work my way up and see. If you're fortunate or love to, uh, fortunate to live in this area that has maker spaces. Oh, cool. That you could get a good place for tool access and lessons in the Sarasota area. Oh, that's awesome. I'll look around here. I don't even know that because I. Uh, if uh, uh, that's a good thing for all of you out there, if you can look around. Uh, he's got a, what is it, Suncoast Science dot or mission. <laughs> Oh, dot org mission. Okay, so if you put dot org, um, if you look around in your area, maybe you've got something like that where you can uh, uh, lease stuff out. Because that was one of the things, like I said, with the you know the whole saw is a little expensive, and then a heat gun. See, me and my wife, uh, we do murals and wall prep and uh, painting, and I've always had a heat gun, you know, because it, it's used to strip paint off of the wall. You know, if you got something really tough. So I've always had a heat gun, so I just kind of took for granted. But you know, now heat guns are about twenty, twenty, twenty-five dollars. They're not too bad. I think I had some of my Amazon store. I might have to check. And uh, and I'm sorry, everyone who's been uh, going to the Amazon store and a lot of stuff that I had listed there was like sold out. It's the Amazon, you know, is going through a tough time. You know, just like all of us with everything, and they even stopped taking things that were uh, non-essential. So they stopped orders coming in so pe people couldn't even replenish the stuff, you know, that, that wasn't non-essential. So like a heat gun's non-essential and um, some of the other things uh, that were on there, uh, they ran out of. So people were going and, and clicking my links and going and everything was going unavailable, unavailable. And, and then I try to replace them and those would be on there for a little while and then they run out. But So they're trying to catch back up, but Amazon's like dealing with a bunch of like just the necessary items first. The essentials and then now they're taking other stuff back in but it, it's taking a while to stock back up and to get things out so uh, uh, you know I'm sorry about that it's not you know it's Amazon and uh, it's just kind of a, a tough thing that we're all going through but that's why a lot of things that aren't available before like you know a whole year you know I never even checked it before yet but it and everybody was always replenishing their stock people would buy stuff they'd replenish it and no problems and then, then I'd get all these emails like everything's unavailable where did I get this and so I'm, I'm trying to find those things I'm trying to trying to get you all the uh, valid links but usually if you click on one of my links and it's for like a two inch net cup and that one happens to be out usually if you scroll down the page it'll show you other recommendations and it'll show you other ones and you can usually pop on some of those and some or it'll say on the right side you know say available from these dealers so you don't have to get it from the one that, that I've got in there. It's just I'm trying to give you a recommendation like the one that I used and the one that I ordered at that one time. But if they happen to be out, uh, look around and they, they'll probably have links. You know, Amazon will have you know more of it from a different dealer or something like that, too. So don't feel like you have to get just the one, you know, from that link that, that I put in there. I'm just kind of showing you what I had used. But as long as it's about the same thing, then it still works. Great info, thanks there. Hey, no problem, no problem. What do you recommend for South Florida? As far as what to grow? Oh, here we go. Start microgreens in South Florida. Well, as far as microgreens grow, you can grow them in the house or you can grow them outside, like kind of in the shade. You know, they're little baby sprouts. You don't want them, you know, just popping up and, and being in this 100 degree weather. But we have a wire rack in our kitchen and if you've seen some of my videos and it looks like it's silver, that's where I have the uh, that bubble wrap we were talking about. And we just wrapped it and put grow lights inside of it. And with uh, microgreens, you don't really need grow, grow lights, but they make them grow faster. And uh, they're like really dark green. Brad, Brad's grow lights like work wonderful for it. Um, what do you call it? So you can grow them inside. You can grow just about anything if you're going to have them inside in your climate control. If you're going to grow them outside it's going to be you know a little tough like lettuce um things that have a tough time it's going to you know it, it probably won't even germinate it so hot uh so you you might want to you know germinate everything inside but lettuce you know won't do good um spinach definitely won't do good but things like the the pak choy broccoli that's why 
see, I tried to find alternatives. That's why I have broccoli uh, because it grows. It's like has 40 times the nutrients uh, as its uh, mature counterpart. So it's really nu nutritious um, and it's really hearty. So um, sweet potato leaves. I had a video up and I had to take it down. Uh, a little interesting story about that, but I'll, I'll put another one back up. But now that it's really hot, I can't grow spinach out there. We've got sweet potato leaves growing everywhere and not for the sweet potatoes. And I grow them in the hydroponics. I put the video, another video up, but you guys know that they use it for like decoration around here, like decor. They got sweet potato leaves all over the place. Um, or when people plant out sweet potatoes, they wait for the leaves, you know, it starts to die and they, they cut it and throw the leaves away. Well, you can use those leaves in place of like spinach and it grows. It can't be in the, like the direct sun. It'll, it'll start to wilt a little bit, but if it grows through the shade, um, this hundred degree weather or whatever out there, you know, they're, they're growing just fine. So you can do that. Uh, try to find alternatives. If it, where you live that one time I grew uh, water spinach, Kang Kong, it's a tropical plant. It's invasive down here in Florida. We're not allowed to do it. I had to get rid of it, burn it all. Uh, I took down my videos. I, I had like over 50,000 views and I had to delete it. Uh, delete the videos and that because uh, I didn't want people around here like um, ordering it and, and trying to grow it because it's an invasive plant. You know, it can mess up the uh, ecosystem down here. It, it takes over like the waterways and everything. But some states uh, allow you to uh, personally cultivate it. So if you look up, uh, check out your. Uh, your local agriculture department. And if you can grow that, that thing grows like a friggin' weed. And it's, it's, uh, uh, doesn't have a real strong taste. It's like bland, kind of like spinach. Uh, and you can eat it raw or so you can cook it up too. So I wish we lived in some place. I will, I will be growing that. Marty told me about that one. Here's CB. We're talking about him. Y'all, uh, CB's in the group over there and he, he likes answering questions. And he, whenever he posts a video, he puts it up, up in, uh, that Facebook group. Y'all go check that out. We are melting in the heat. Heat index. Yeah, 106. It's terrible. It's brutal. And then I know y'all had snow in that up here, but down here in Florida, we didn't even have a winter. You know, we didn't have one day of frost this year. We didn't even get any any frost. And uh, now it's just hot. So it's going to be a long, long summer here. I was reading about flowers that do well in hydroponics. I might add a few. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, you do that. Uh, right now, see, we're trying to maximize our space, and I always like to grow stuff that I can eat. So Keely, she likes to grow, you know, flowers, uh, but I let her grow nasturtiums, which are pretty cool because you can eat the flowers, real peppery tasting. You know, you don't want to eat a whole salad of it, but if you sprinkle a couple of nasturtium, uh, the petals or the leaves, you can eat the whole nasturtium plant, the leaves, the stem, the seed pod, the, the uh, petals, and the really pretty colors but you can you know lots of high-end uh, restaurants buy it and, and put it on their food uh what do you call it nasturtiums do really good and uh what else did you grow oh lavender because then we can eat eat that or we can make tea out of it too that's a good idea using it to extract uh, pollinators i'm trying let's see win win pak choy and, and salanova green butter lettuce inside in the pool noodles awesome let me know how it goes becky like I said, if you join the Facebook group too, uh, put some pictures up there. I know almost everybody before, like, you know, when I first started this, uh, you know, it's it tough. We, not everyone was running around with a camera or, or, you know, but we all, we all have our phones now and everybody can just take a picture of something like that and post it to Facebook like that quick. It's awesome that, you know, every, everyone around here, like around the world can just like share photos, you know, at a moment's notice. It's pretty cool. Let's see, my wife's kind of spamming the chat here. Waiting on oat seeds to grow indoors for my kitty. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, where did I get my pock choy seeds? Um, I've got it on uh, my Amazon store. If you look in the Amazon store, I don't know if I put the links down below. I think I just have my Etsy store. But if you look at one of my other videos, I've got my Amazon store down there. But I think that that one came from China because the ones that I usually get around here were all out because of this whole thing that's going on. Um, for some reason, they stopped selling seeds at one point to just people. And, you know, they considered non-essential, but it, they would sell it to commercial growers. 
and it got everything got scarce like really quick um so the ones i usually get weren't on there so i found some other place but it came from china it took about two or three weeks i think but i just planted that out uh two days ago like day before yesterday in the hydrogen grow bed so i have a video coming out on that because it's i had some of the old pak choy uh that was still in there and I took that out and planted some seeds and I filmed it. I just got to edit it up and I'll, I'll put it on there. But uh, mine just came in and it took about two or three weeks. I'm going to see how those grow. But that's why I was wanting, I'm going to look into see if, if I can buy seeds in bulk. Then the seeds that I use, you know, maybe I can buy one pound or five pound bags or something at a time and then make up like sample packets for y'all, you know, the different seeds that I use. And then that way y'all won't have to buy you can get smaller packets um i know broccoli you know it, it, the smaller the packet the more expensive it gets you know if you buy in bulk but some people don't want a whole pound of broccoli so you know it's going to take a while to get through it let's see i use sweet potatoes yeah for juicing yeah that's awesome 111 yeah it's just terrible out there thumbs up hey appreciate that Appreciate that, CB. Let's see. Somebody's aquaponics. Yeah, I tried aquaponics a while ago, but it's uh, I was always afraid I was going to end up killing a bunch of fish. So that's why I went with hydroponics, so that I didn't have that guilty conscious if, if I messed up. in Because I'm on the road a lot, not in the last three months. This is really weird because we're always on the road, and that's why I grow like this. And just being at home for the last couple of months is just, just really strange. It's going to be... Uh, a little weird getting back out on the road. Nope, just getting started in the whole hydro thing. Stumbled on awesome show. Awesome, cool. Well, appreciate it. Always good to see new people. Maybe we've got a couple new people that popped in here and that said their first time. That was awesome. And let's see. And Ruth, I want to say thank you again for the super chat. That was mighty kind of you. I really appreciate it. Um, if anybody's got any real quick uh last questions like i said let me pop this up here and get that off so these are food grade the tops come off for easy cleaning they're durable it's, it's a lot thicker it took me about twice as long to drill through this as the downspout so so it's a little more durable it comes with your pool noodles of course your nutrients and i've got the little takeout container so you can grow some microgreens on it your nutrients so all of that's coming in it and right now I'm going to go ahead because I was selling all the downspouts, buy one, get one free. I got this buy one, get one free right now. But if you go on the, uh, down below, if you go on the Etsy store, let me show you what y'all can find. Cause a lot of people make a mistake like this, but, but I fix it, but it takes me time. Um, you see something like that. It says new. That's the one pack. That's 24 99. And to get buy one, get one free, I can't do that kind of order on, on Etsy. So what I do is I make this one a two-pack. See down here at the bottom, it says two-pack. And I make that half price. So that's basically like paying for one and getting one free. So if you want the buy one, get one free offer, make sure you get the two-pack. And I'll have that going for probably a couple of weeks, like I said, to go ahead and see how this goes. I want to get it out to a lot of people. And... uh uh, if everybody gets their orders in, because I may have to order a bunch more of them, uh, but uh, I can ship them out a lot quicker than I did the other ones. And, and people are waiting on, you know, the other ones. It was taking like up to two weeks for me to get stuff out, but uh, I just got slammed with them. And I w all I do is, since I've been home, because of home isolation, all I've been doing is cutting and drilling and heating and bending and cutting and drilling and shipping and backing. <laughs> so, but it's been fun because when I do it, everyone that i do i'm thinking wow this is going out you know if it's one package or four packages some people order like 10 um that it's going out to somebody it's going to be out there uh learning how to you know grow you know some food and and then uh, a couple weeks later i get pictures back you know that they're they're you know have them all set up and they're growing lettuce or spinach or whatever they're growing in it so uh the it's really helped me through like this time that you know could really be depressing when they said we're going to get stuck at home all of a sudden, I was able to like share something with all of you, and then you guys share something with all of me, and it's just kind of it, it's like lifting my spirits. It just kept me going through all of this. So really appreciate it all. So can I buy through? Let's see. 
Can I buy through Amazon or through YouTube? Um, I will look into Amazon. Uh, I sell on Amazon FBA. Uh, you know, I ship in in that. Uh, the only thing is that Amazon charges like really high fees. So for something about that price, besides um, all the other costs, they'll add on probably like 10 to $12. So the price of it will go up and, and that's to take care of all of their costs because they handle customer service and shipping and everything. But I have to pay to ship it into the Amazon warehouse. So that comes out of my pocket. So I'm like paying for shipping there. And then when you pay shipping, you're paying it to Amazon. And if you've got Amazon Prime, you've got free shipping. But as far as it getting from my house, well, first, I've got to pay to get it from the warehouse to my house for me to prep it. So I've got to pay shipping to get it to me. And then if I send it to Amazon, I got to pay shipping to get it from me to the Amazon warehouse. And then if you got Amazon Prime, you get free shipping. But I've already paid shipping like twice. And and then on top of that, they add on like another 10, 10 or twelve dollars. It's um, it's uh, to lease their warehouse space. And I think that I'm, I'm a new seller on there. So I've only got 10 cubic feet. That, that I can basically rent out. Those fees are basically renting a space in their warehouse. So when you start out, they give me 10 cubic feet and I've got all the other stuff that I, I if you guys don't know, I like flip items like retail arbitrage or I go out and, and uh, find things that are on clearance and, and send them in and make a couple of bucks. But some of those have taken up the space. So I don't have the few, full 10 cubic feet, which is not really that much. If you say like two by five by two, that's 10 cubic feet. Uh, so these things you can tell will take up, you know, because I can't stack them up because they're not, I've got to send it in ready to go like this so that if somebody orders one, they just get this and do that. You know, if I could stack them all up and they would take these and put nutrients in and put the pool noodles, you know, then I could, you know, fit a lot in one space, but I've got to have it sit like that in an Amazon store. So, you know, I could only fit one to, you know, probably four or five of them. And, and the cost would be like really high. So, that, so that's kind of uh, uh, holding me back. I, I did think about that. Let's see. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you doing? I'm a retailer too. Oh, yeah, cool. Okay. Do you do that? That's awesome. It's uh, That's something that, like I said, since I got to uh, making these downspouts and, and experiment with this and, and mailing things out, that kind of kept me going because we got used to like running out to all of the thrift shops and and retail stores and, and looking for products to send in. Um, besides just making some money at it, it's fun. You kind of get used to you want to wake up and and you're like, oh, I've got to hit the, the thrift shop before everybody else does. And, you know, try to find a good find or or beat them to the clearance aisle. So uh, we got used to doing that like all the time. Every time we had a day off, we were out sourcing. And uh when they said everything's locking down, not essentially, they just like shut everything down. You're like, you know, that is something you used to doing almost every day is just like gone. So uh, that uh, I can't wait for things to kind of open back up and things to get back to normal. I really don't want to go into like Goodwill right now and be like shoulder to shoulder with people around the bins, you know, trying to find things. And, you know, we got to stay apart. So um, I've seen like only a couple of yard sales lately. Uh, but I can't, I can't wait for it to be, I, I had fun doing that. I'm an essential worker and nurse. Oh, awesome. Cool. Appreciate that being a nurse. That's why I said, I love watching you. It's very relaxing to learn. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Kim, I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching too. Appreciate you hanging around. That's awesome of you. Got to go freshen up my hydro tanks. Yeah. Go on. Hey, y'all check out CB to his channel. Uh, you have a safe week too, uh, CB, but if you guys want about the heat, uh, he, he has a couple of videos on his channel. What he does is he's got his hydroponic set up and he's got a big reservoir that pumps through all through his uh, uh, greenhouse. But he like freezes like blocks of nutrient solution. So when he goes out, when the temperature is up too high and he goes out and drops that in. And of course, that gets the pH and the um, parts per million, you know. And so he's got videos on how he adjusts everything. Like I said, I don't adjust anything on mine. But that's the way that he keeps his cool. So, uh, like I said, we can all learn from each other. Don't make sure you you got any questions about that. You want to do things on a bigger scale. Like they, he gets like, you know, tons of tomatoes and peppers and everything off of the, the uh, two greenhouses. You can always check him out. 
What about rain, the nutrients, will it change the pH of the water? It can if you get too much. And that's why growing this way, like I so said, we're trying to make things as easy as possible. So a lot of the things that I recommend are fast growing, fast maturing, leafy greens, you know, it, it, uh, tomatoes and that will be a little more of a problem. You got to stay on top of those. If it does rain, you know, it will fill it up. And, and uh, what do you call it? Like I said, on our buckets, we drill a little hole so it won't fill up, overfill to a certain point. But then it throws off your stuff. And I don't teach people about pH or your uh, nutrients. Uh, like I said, CB's got uh, videos on his channel where you can use meters. Meters aren't that expensive, but like I said, uh, we try to keep things simple here. I want to do it so that someone like, like my mom could have just got it and, and put stuff together real quick and, and learn to grow something. And if I would have told my mom when she was around and that, I would have told her, you know, well, you need to get a pH meter and you need to check it. You need to keep it between 5.5 and 6.5 or something. And you need to check the parts per million and you got to make sure you, you know, she, she would have been like, forget it. So what we try to do over here is try to make it as easy as possible for everyone. But if you want to, you can check the pH and you can check the, the parts per million. Uh, it just takes a little extra time. Uh, anything extra that you can do is better. You know, I'm not saying this is like the end all beat all. This is our baby steps to get people into something. Usually hydroponics has a bit of a learning curve and a little bit of a money up front. And if you really want to, any of you really want to get into, if you have a hydroponics uh, shop around you, go in there and ask them what you need to get started. And it's gonna blow your mind. They're gonna tell you, you need this and this and this and this and this and ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And, and then you start watching videos and you'll be on there watching you know, hours and hours and hours of videos. Um, so we're giving you baby steps to try and get everybody excited because hydroponics is cool. If you look at it, uh, if you, there's uh, third world uh, countries in that that are using it to feed people because you can use a whole lot less water. And you can grow a ton of vegetables in that. It's, uh, it's awesome. So what we try to do is get people interested in it so that they can, you know, take something smaller like this, you know, grow them some veggies and got some other pictures here. I've got some older pictures. Need to update these. Is this one? There it goes. You know, if, it, if you, it doesn't take very much to do something like this. Each one of those is like a Dollar Tree container. You see, I got a red one in there too. It wasn't always all green. Um, the one in the very front, let's see if I get the comment off of here real quick. That's one that's like a shoe box. You see in there and I put like twice as much. But this is a, as much as I want to grow at one time of any different microgreens. Uh, you'll see a lot of people are doing them in 10 by 20 trays. And if you eat a lot of microgreens, that's fine. Um, we don't eat a whole lot. You can see like down in the right hand corner, that's like, you know, we, we get like tomatoes growing, uh, you know, so we're not gonna eat a lot of tomatoes. So I don't wanna grow a bunch of them, but I put them on this little wicking bed so that, you know, they can kind of grow on their own. But almost anyone anywhere can do something like this. You know, that's one of our downspouts in the back. And we just stuck different kinds of lettuce. Those are lettuce that we just bought up at home improvement store, rinsed off the roots and just popped them in there. Um, so, you know, it, it's all relatively easy and just about anyone can do it. And that's what that's what we're all about here is just trying to do keep things simple to get people interested. Then once you get a handle, you know, you're not going to get it. Some of you do. A lot of you get out there and, and do it the first time and get it right. And, and you know, that just blows my mind. Um, I worked for years on doing these and I had a lot of failures and I did a lot of experimenting. So when, when you guys go through and you get a little bit of uh, um, uh, some things go wrong, you know, don't worry about it. Try again. You know, not everything's going to work out the first time because we all live, live in different environments. Um, right now it's hot everywhere, but sometimes it's like really hot here. Somebody on the other side of the planet, it's like winter time. Uh, other people, you know, up north, it might be a little cooler, might be like perfect. And we all have our yard is in a different place. We have different hours of sunlight. We have different humidity. Our water's different where we live at. There, there's a whole host of different things. So you're gonna have to experiment a little bit. So don't get too excited and go out and and spend a thousand dollars getting all kinds of stuff and, and just throwing it out there and, and then it all you know crap out and, and you get discouraged right off the bat. You know, test out different things, 
when you master that, then you can kind of scale it, try something different. But, but you know, we just tried to do everything as simple as possible here. I know he's selling them on Etsy. Yeah, but I was asking where a person can purchase them and make their own. Oh, to make their own. Um, let's see. Follow me on uh, Twitter. I'm uh, Mike Van Duzzi. On Twitter, I'm keep on growing Mike Van Duzzi. Or go into the Facebook group and DM me. And I'll try to find the link. I think it was from a restaurant supply wholesaler or something is where I bought it. So if you, you guys, you want food grade, um, you can go into, if you want to make one of these, like I said, you don't, this, I don't want to sell something cheap to, to someone. So that's why I look for something that's like really sturdy. So, but you know, if you want to make it your own, you can go into Walmart and uh, Home Depot or, or what, not Home Depot, but Walmart and that and go into, instead of going, to where the bins are go into the kitchen section and find the containers that they have for the kitchen because that's all food grade stuff so if you're interested in food grade things go over to the kitchen you know i've got uh the big totes like from home depot and that's what i got the sweet potatoes growing in but if you want food grade go over to the kitchen department and you can use just about anything there uh, if you want to order online look up anything that has to do with food uh restaurant supplies and, and stuff like that find you a container you can you can find all kinds of sizes of container. Like I said, I, I was trying to find one because um, when I ship it to people, like I said, I didn't want the, the shipping cost to be more than the container itself. That doesn't make any sense. But if you're buying it to make it yourself, just look up any restaurant supply. Uh, uh, the really big tubs that they use that look like a bus tub, like the, the uh, dishwashers use. Uh, when we worked in a restaurant, we had some that we used that, that were uh, food grade that you use inside of the walk-in that you put your food into. Now that is uh, food grade. So you can always get those uh, and some of them have lids and just drill your holes in there. And that's a very good size container. We're gonna talk, I'm gonna have another video coming out about containers and, and usually like the real deep ones, uh, different kind of plants don't really need that much space. Like the Swiss chard, their roots grow really deep you know, tomatoes and that, but then some other ones like pak choy, roots don't grow that deep. You don't need a real deep container. So sometimes those more shallow containers do a lot better. And I hope that answers your question. I, I tend to talk a little too much when somebody asks a question. I can't like just answer it like really quick. Be safe, Kim and Ruth. Okay, some people are taking off. Bye. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate everything y'all do. Turn to the medical. Yeah, and everybody stays safe. I bought food grade five gallon buckets. Yeah, I've got I've got some of those. That's what I was working with. But I noticed that the light was still getting through. Yeah, now of course it is in direct sunlight, but I wasn't sure if the light itself and I needed to watch. Yeah, uh, just keep an eye on it. Some of mine grow a little bit of algae, and uh, you know a little bit's not too bad. You know you just don't want it to get get you know too much because it's eating up the nutrients and everything. Um, but you can get that uh, bubble wrap that insulation. And you can just cut a piece and just wrap it around the bucket. You don't even have, you can just tape it or you can stick a big rubber band, a couple big rubber bands around it, but it kind of cut, uh, cuts down on the light a little bit. Ikea might have good food grade containers. I didn't even think of that. We've got an Ikea about uh, about 20, 20 miles away from here. I might go check that out when uh, everything starts to open back up. Spray paint the outside of them. Yeah, yeah, make them look pretty. Yeah, spray paint them. Uh, what we usually do if we spray paint them, I don't spray paint the tops, you know, where the plants are going to sit. But the outside, uh, usually spray paint them black, a couple coats to get it really dark. And then I go around with a light color, like white. And then if you have someone who's an artist like my wife, then she can go and paint little leaves and flowers and bugs and shit on it. It makes, makes it look pretty cool. I've been using bucket containers, but it's always good. Especially, let's see, being depressed and eat anything can help oh cool yeah appreciate that it's good to help people and i appreciate you guys all in here like talking to each other and helping each other out too like i said it's a, difficult for me to keep up with the chat and and like i said if you you guys want to you know get in that facebook group and help each other out too there's lots of people if, you, if you've done this and and you got a handle on it uh you know everybody really appreciates the help and and then if you think you need help uh, CB who was in here uh, there's a lot of people in there that, that uh, love helping everybody out 
great little community. Can you link the best way to grow sunflower microgreen soil or hydro? Uh, let's see. I like, I, it's a little mixture of both. I do the self growing, the self watering container like we have. And I put a little bit of soil, a little inch of soil. The, to me, the sunflowers, they get kind of tall. And if you just do it on something like a paper towel or a grow mat, they'll all start to lean over. But if they've got a little bit of soil, it gives them a little something to hold on to. And they'll get, you know, three, four inches before, you know, you harvest them. So I like using a little bit of soil with it. Peas, too. Ooh, peas are good. I've got some growing right now. I've got a time lapse on it, too. I'm hoping that comes out right. And let me see, did I miss anybody? Your videos are great. Oh, thank you, thank you, M. Farius. And thank you for being here, I really do appreciate that. Arugula, peppery arugula, sharing is caring. Yep, yep, and that's what we're all about. Like I said, it's uh, it's just awesome. Like I said, I got so many messages from people all over the place in that, and and uh, like I said, I get when I get messages back from people I don't even know, and they're like, hey, I saw you in, like this group or that group and you know I'm only in so many groups on Facebook and and I know it's because somebody took it and shared it with someone and they could have shared it and shared it and shared it you know who knows how many times it went around somewhere before you know somebody found it and then they find their way back here and it, it's uh, pretty cool and we find find people like all over the world it just it blows my mind love your channel you really make things easy awesome appreciate it that that's uh um that's my intent and uh, I take a little bit of heat from that too, from the other growers and hydroponic channels. And, and I get people, you know, some of them, I usually delete some comments because I don't want you guys to see, you know, like nastiness or whatever. But, you know, they'll jump on and go, you can't do this. You can't do that. And blah, blah, blah. And like, well, like, explain. I've got three years of videos on here showing I can, you know, you know explain that. But, you know, I, know I try to be nice to everyone. But, uh, you know, it's all about us all sharing and helping each other and, and like I said and, and to make it easy because look I tried it in the very beginning I was I was doing traditional garden you can ask my wife and, and we we'd leave and come back and everything would be dead or or deer ran all through it or, or something would happen and we, and we were going through years and years and years of like heartache and and I, I was about to give up and I was watching videos and, and doing research I found hydroponics I found it really fascinating hydroponics and aeroponics and aquaponics and them trying to grow stuff in space with hydroponics and and going back to uh, ancient like Egyptians and that like using it uh, so it's really fascinating but then I did like everyone else you know when said okay what do I need and you need you know all of this stuff and, and hydrogen and rock wool and net cups and and channels and and lights and pumps and aeration and, and meters and blah 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 and I was like whoa and I was spending a lot of money at the hydroponic shop and then, like, we'd be gone and my breaker would trip and everything would die again. I was like, my God, you know what's going on? I said, there's got to be an easy way. And I found Dr. Kratke. And so if you guys don't, the kind approaches, uh, check out his channel. That's the original guy that started all this off-grid hydroponics. I was like, oh, there's no pumps. You know, then I don't have to worry about that. And then it was carefree. I was putting stuff in. You know, we plant that out. You put microgreens in there and they can go for like a month. You don't even have to check it or anything. Um, it, it was just fascinating to me. It was something that worked. And then, so what I did was I made the downspout because that fit my handrails. You know, I'm doing this, you know, different containers that help different people out, but it took that basic knowledge and, and ran with it. So, um, I, I needed to find an easy way to do it. And then when, once I did it an easy way, I didn't want to go back to, you know, the tough way. So I figured, well, there's a lot of people I know that I've seen them in the comments complaining and saying, you know, this doesn't work or I can't afford this and that. So I want to help all those people because after you master this, if you got the money and, and the extra time and you can take care of it and you want to scale up, you can go spend a couple hundred or a thousand dollars and buy, you know, the the ones that hang and, and uh, the drip irrigation. You can get NFT channels. You can have your whole backyard set up with hydroponics and it'd be awesome. Um, one of the other channels that I had uh, on one of my videos like years back, uh, Spring Spring Hill Farms, I think. They've got like a little commercial grow going on up in Canada. And they've just got a huge thing full of all these downspouts and chard and greens and all kinds of stuff growing in it. And they're doing it on a commercial scale. 
So you can you can really scale it up if you know you've got time to take care of it and you want to put the money into it. But like me, whatever we're going to use, I don't like to waste stuff. So I can make a cool YouTube video and say, oh, I should just fill up my whole backyard with downspouts and grow all this you know food and have a cool video. But if I don't have people to give it to, and we don't eat it that quick, you know, then it just ends up in compost. I try to, you know, I try to grow what we eat and try not to grow too much more. It's what we eat, what the bugs eat. You know, some they're going to get some, so you know, grow a little bit more. But I try not to grow in overabundance. But there's some people out there doing it on a commercial scale. It's really fantastic. Glad I found your channel. Oh, appreciate it. haters. Yeah, yeah. I just ignore them. That's why I said you don't see me like arguing with them and everything. And uh, you know, I just get get rid of it because it's a uh, we just want positivity around here. Hey, no problem, Kim. And I really uh, appreciate what you do too. And then uh, you guys being essential workers and that it's uh, we're going through tough times. And really appreciate all you guys. I love the frogs and other wildlife. Cool. Yeah, it's a. Uh, we moved in the city and we we missed that. When I was out there, they'd be it, stuff would be around all the time, um, and it, and it was really cool. So uh, my wife misses all of the, the wildlife. So now we're in here. I get a bunch of squirrels and lizards, and but out there we had deer and turkey and turtles, and, and they had it was on a, a ranch. You know, we had uh, um peacocks and donkeys and and horses and you know all the stuff that they had too in, in addition to the wildlife so it was pretty cool for the people who have limited space your cracking and growing is great yeah it's awesome and that you know that's another thing we moved here now all of a sudden we went from being on 300 acres down to a little tiny yard where our neighbors you know are like right there and right there and a, a tiny backyard but, you know, so we're still growing our own food, so it's, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, too. And let's see. I'm going to be winding it up because I've got an important call to make somebody I'm going to talk to uh, about this. Um, uh, and y'all might be interested in this. I don't know if you know him, uh, Chef Doucette. And he's somebody that I met on Facebook. But I'm actually putting putting together a little course for people who don't want to watch like hours and hours of YouTube videos and or don't even like coming on YouTube. And we're going to reach out to some people, you know, that, um, you know, not everybody use social media. So we're building a little course and I'm trying to figure out what else to give people besides just learning how to, you know, start off on hydroponics like this. And one thing is this guy, Chef Doucette, Doucette and a... Uh, um, he actually had a heart attack while he was driving and, and crashed and uh, uh, he went on a vegan diet and lost like 110 pounds and uh, turned back the clocks on uh, his uh, cholesterol, got his cholesterol down, blood pressure, uh, diabetes, you know, got everything all back in order and he's got a fascinating story and, and he's a chef so he cooks a lot of this food and, and I cook a lot. Me and my wife used to cater some parties. so. We're getting together and we'll figure that since you're growing leafy greens, you know, you don't have to be a vegan, but you can enjoy, you know, veggies, you know, uh, uh, you can still, you know, uh, eat, you know, healthy one way or the other, you know, it doesn't matter what lifestyle you have. So we're going to be putting together courses where I can show him how to grow some food and then he's going to have some cooking classes and we'll have like a little membership over there. So we're we're working on that so i've got to talk to him real quick that's like something i'm really excited about uh, there's other things we want to kind of grow into like i said as i get older i'm not going to want to be traveling on the road two three hours a day or anything and and uh that that's kind of wearing on me as i'm, I'm uh, getting over 50 now i just want to spend a little bit more time at home and have more time to do all of this you know when i'm on the road you know i'm thinking about the stuff you know that i have to do here so these past couple of months, even though we we went through home isolation and it's a real tough time we're going through in the country, it's kind of been like a little silver lining because it's 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 got me off the road and I've got more time to um, spend making containers, connecting with you all, and putting together like all these other programs that that I may be able to get into those and spend less time on the road. And this could be something that I could work you know build. So I'm going to be talking to him about that. I'm real excited about that, and and that's all because of you guys too. You know, I would never have this channel if you guys weren't you know hanging around and and watching and sharing and everything. So uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you. 
Uh, Ruth, thank you for the super chat and thank everybody. You know, anybody that's like ordered or is going to order or or has ever you know uh, contributed to this channel. You know, I couldn't do it without you all, and I really love you all. And and above all, you know, everybody just share it with everybody. You know, share it on Facebook or YouTube or or whatever social media because we never know who we're going to touch. Even if those people never make their way back to us and we never hear about them, you're putting good out into the world that 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 you know just spreads like like wildfire. And uh, uh, we don't always need to know what has happened, and we don't need to, you know, get some kind of return on it. Just that we put the good out there, you know, is all that matters, right? So, thank you all. I'm gonna have to get off. Like I said, I've got to uh, go talk with uh, with the chef about that. Really appreciate everybody being in here. And if anybody has any questions, don't forget. I think my wife put it in the chat one time. I'll come back here later. Uh, just go to Facebook and and search "Keep on Growing." Join our group. And we can chat over there, uh, and we'll try to keep up with everybody's questions. But y'all have a good night. We'll talk to y'all later. Love y'all.